thing about myself is I'm a very competitive person. Failure is not an option. Having a lot of the bad things happen to me, you know, putting me into the hospital and learning from that, I started reflecting back and saying, you know what, I got into this industry to be healthy. I want to get myself into the best shape of my life, not only for my age, for any age, to get myself ripped up like I did in a competition. I need to step forward. By being humble, by being passionate, inspiring nutrition, it's the sky's the limit. I first started weight training uh, when I was around 13 years old. Uh, I was one of those typical skinny kids, so it was like the 89 pound weakling. A friend of mine, his father collected old Muscle Builder magazines. So I went into his basement and in the magazines I was reading about people like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lou Ferrigno and all these guys that for me were like superheroes because these guys had all this muscle and it was to me, it was amazing how someone could build themselves like that. I did start training in my basement. And reading the magazines, I saw there was a lot more exercises and a lot more equipment that I needed. So there was a gym in Highland Park, New Jersey. It was called Health and Strength. So I actually would take my bike at 15 years old, drive my bike there to train at that gym. And at that time, at 15 and 16, I actually developed muscle really quickly. From being this 89-pound weakling, I went up to 160 pounds within a year and a half. I got strong very quickly, bench pressing at 16 years old, over 350 pounds, squatting close to 500 pounds. So I saw that I had the genetics in lifting. And at that gym, we had a local competition. Everyone in the gym wanted to get ready for what was called the Health and, Health and Strength Classic. I went into that show and actually won that show in the gym. But from there, I wanted to actually compete in a, in a state show as a teenager. And then I competed in my first state show at 16 years old, which to my disappointment, I got in sixth place. And it took me till three years to actually win that show as a teenager. And when I won that show, I won the overall. And in that show, there was a men's division, which I actually won that as well at 19 years old. So at 19 years old, I won the teenage division and the men's division. And then my parents were really proud of me because they saw that I can actually do something and beat people much older than me. From that point that I won that show, it felt like I was winning every show. So now I was going into the Nationals or the Mr. America, which was the biggest show, which was everybody in the country going against, you know, people that won the Junior Nationals, Junior USA, other people that have been in the Nationals the year before competing in that show. That year in San Jose, I placed fifth. I met a guy named Ed Connors. Basically, Ed Connors was the manager and owner of Gold's Gym uh, franchises. He owned all the Gold's Gyms, and he saw me competing, and he basically said to me, he said, Rich, you know, if you drop a weight class, go as a light heavyweight, you have a great chance of winning. I also want to give you and offer you a job and move out to California to manage a gym in California. So for me, it was just like this 20-year-old kid from New Jersey now living in California and living the dream of being a bodybuilder. I was training in that gym, managing the gym. There was many pros there. There was actually Lee Haney, Bertel Fox, Corey Everson, Sting was there, Hulk Hogan was there, Albert Beckles was there. This gym was loaded with pros. So I was training there, getting myself ready for the Nationals, and Lee Haney actually saw me train and asked me, would you be interested in training with me um, so that I can get in shape for my first Mr. Olympia win? And for me, to be able to train with Lee Haney, who was already a pro, it was like I was in heaven. I said, sure, I'll train with you. What do you want me to do? Lee Haney was a very easygoing, genetic freak. He could train in the gym and just grow muscle. I was a guy, when I went to the gym, I was all business, very intense. And that's what Lee Haney liked. When I went to the gym, I go, Lee Haney, let's go. We're going to train hard. He used to say, you know, you want to stimulate, don't annihilate the muscle. And that's what I did. I would stimulate the muscle to grow it properly. And he taught me that, taught me how to become more balanced. I put more intensity into his training, in which that year he got to win his first Mr. Olympia. So when I transitioned to become pro, I actually went up to 215 and just as ripped as I was as 188. So now I was competing at 215 to 220 against Lee Haney. And the one thing I did is I, I truly respected him as being the best. And of course I wanted to beat him, but I never disrespected the best bodybuilder. For me, 
the way I felt is if I could come in the best shape of my life and that he slipped up, I could take that crown. And there was a couple of years that I felt that I did that, but you know, you always have to knock out the champ and I didn't get to do that. He ended up becoming eight time Mr. Olympia, beating out Arnold Schwarzenegger's record. So I can't say that I didn't do that bad because I came second place three years in a row to him, uh, top five for seven years in the Mr. Olympia. I was upset because I didn't get to win that Mr. Olympia. But looking at it today and reflecting back, to me it was one of the greatest uh, times of my life that I'll never forget that helped me be who I am today. It, it's funny, when I, when I met Joe Weider, it was right after I won the Nationals uh, and also won the Mr. Universe. So that two weeks later, remember, was the Mr. Olympia, which Lee Haney was going in his first Mr. Olympia. So, you know, later on, a year later, I saw Joe Weider again because I en ended up competing in the, uh, the Night of the Champions, which I got second, and then getting in top three in the Mr. Olympia. But uh, I became friends with him, and he also was my mentor. I got to do this interview with Joe Weider. I picked you to do one of all the covers. Not only you have a great inspiration, but you got a great face, a great body. You inspired millions of people through the magazine, the covers, the articles. If you love what you're doing and doing it right, you're going to be doing great benefit for all people, not only the body, but also for the world. Uh, when I asked him, like, you know, Joe, I want to tell you what I'm doing, he goes, I know exactly what you're doing. He goes, I'm very proud of you. Every bodybuilder in his life, in his spirit, wants to become a man. Like you, you did the best you could with the products, the advertising, helping people, you can go further. What you're doing now is just the beginning. Oh, it's great, it's great. Uh, Again, thank be, you. Be successful. Thank you. And anything I can do, nowhere to go. Thank you. And for me, for Joe Weider to say that, that was like my father telling me that. When I competed as a pro, I was very focused, and my focus was to win and always look my best. And I knew that my edge was always my shape, my definition, my muscularity, my straighty glutes. If I lost that edge, I would get beaten. So it was very important that I had to keep that edge. What I had to do, which today bodybuilders do, is I had to bring a scale with me to weigh myself. I brought a scale to weigh my food. Uh, I would bring food with me. When I went out in the different countries, I would buy food, cook the food in my room. I would never eat in restaurants. I would have a log of everything I ate, how I looked. So it was basically very scientific in what I was doing with my body. I really never looked at the competition. I always looked at what Rich Gasparri can be better at, whether Rich Kasparri can be more ripped or Rich Kasparri can be, you know, get more symmetry, get more shape. Whenever I went into a competition to be better than another bodybuilder, I usually failed. So it was always trying to be better than the last Rich Kasparri. Because I trained so heavy, I trained so hard, I did have a lot of injuries. Um, I had problems with my back, I had problems with my discs, uh, my lower back my neck, so I competed right into 1992. I started feeling like I was burning out. I felt that like my body wasn't responding, so I took off a couple years from competing. I actually started my own gym in New Jersey. I wanted to you know, do a lot of the entrepreneurial things that I love doing besides competing. Because of injuries, it caused me to retire off bodybuilding, and my last show was 1996. What happened was I had a herniated disc in my neck paralyzed my whole right arm. I went from using 160 pound dumbbells to not be able to pick up 20 pound dumbbells with my right arm. I still went to the gym, trained to build that back, but I knew my, you know, my uh, competitive days were over. I'm not gonna be a bodybuilder anymore. All this effort that I put into being a bodybuilder, I have to put my effort into something else because I knew that I couldn't use my body to make money anymore. I contemplated saying, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna be a personal trainer. Uh, how many clients can I build up? I said, you know what? I really have an interest in proper eating, proper nutrition. I, I felt that it was just a, a great transition for me to get into the supplement business. And from there, I just learned uh, very quickly uh, with a lot of mistakes on the way in how to get into the supplement business. In, uh, in 1997, it was an idea. And in 1999, I incorporated and became Gasparri Nutrition.